Hi, caregivers. Welcome to Let's Talk Dementia. I am Carol Howie, your host, internationally certified dementia practitioner and author of the Amazon best-selling book, Let's Talk Dementia. And I hope you will check it out on Amazon as well as on our website, which is www.letstalkdementia.org. You can also write me. My email address is carol at letstalkdementia.org. And when you write me with whatever's going on in your world, I'll write you back. I promise if you give me your phone number, I might even call you. Whoops. I tell you, I'm having complications here. There we go. <laughs> well, I want to say a special thank you to our sponsor, National Association of Veterans and Families. You can reach them at 800-352-2919. Their website is www.navf.org. Now, if you are looking for benefits for the veteran or the spouse of the veteran or both, that's where you need to go. Don't go to the VA. They'll drive you crazy. They can't tell you, give you the same answer twice. I have been there. just drove me bonkers. Um, contact National Association of Veterans and Families. They're not going to charge you to help you. So tell them Carol sent you. Then Beth Crosby, my editor extraordinaire, I want to tell you about her. In case you have print, you have something in print format, something you've written, she needs to be looking at it and make sure it looks really good um, so that when it goes out with your name on it, you can be proud of it. So Beth Crosby at EditorBeth.com. Well, today the topic we're talking about is dementia and your pearly whites. Yay! I wish mine were pearly, pearly white. I went to the dentist once to have my teeth whitened. Well, to talk to him about it, first of all. And um, she said, well, what are you expecting from this whitening procedure? And I said, I'm expecting to have white teeth. And she said, now, Carol, you don't want chiclets. <laughs> you know the chiclets gum, the, the rectangular shape? She said, you don't want chiclets. I went, yeah, I do. I want them to be very, very white. Didn't come out quite like that, unfortunately. My son-in-law is a dentist, and I keep going, now, is there anything new you can do that you want to practice on me to get my teeth whiter? And he tells me, no. <laughs> but keeping your teeth healthy. Now, why do we need to talk about that on Let's Talk Dementia? I thought you'd never ask, and it's a very good question. So we know that brushing and flossing and seeing your dentist regularly is it's just what you should be doing. It's really not an option. It's not like, should I floss? Yeah, you should every day. Do I really need to brush my teeth twice a day? At least, yes, you do. And do I have to go pay to see the dentist? Well, yes, you do, because he's got to support my daughter. <laughs> so, yes, it's a very important thing. But there is a new study that has come out that shows um, a type of bacteria that's abbreviated P. gingivalis. It's a very, very long name. I'm not going to begin to pronounce. But just think about P. gingivalis, not gingivitis, but gingivalis. And it's associated with periodontitis. Um, and it's been found in the brains of patients with Alzheimer's disease. Now, isn't that interesting? It's crossed the blood-brain barrier, and it's now in the brain. Um, periodontitis is an advanced form of gum disease or infection of the tissues that surround the teeth, according to the American Dental Association. Now, y'all know I don't know all that by heart, so I have to read it to you. Um, there was a study done on mice that found that this P. gingivalis infection spurred the production of beta amyloid plaque. Now, beta amyloid plaque is what we see in the brains after the point of death of individuals who have Alzheimer's disease. It's proteins that clump, clump together. It's a hallmark symptom of Alzheimer's disease. They found that the toxins released by this P. gingivalis were present in brain cells of those with Alzheimer's. Essentially, Alzheimer's may be, in part, a type of brain infection. Now, I've heard that term before that maybe that's what's going on. It's a type of infection in the brain. Well, this P. gingivalis has actually been found to be part of the um, what they're seeing in the brain. So it's not a good thing. And so the company that did this study, and there's been a couple done, but one of the companies has developed an investigational drug called COR388. And they've said that the preclinical trials of this drug, um, this treatment, is brain protective and reduces the P. gingivalis bacteria, and which is that is then leading to the production of beta amyloid plaque and, and inflammation. So, if we can reduce that um, 
that bacteria in the brain, then it's all around a good thing, right? So this isn't the first study to make the connection between gum disease and, and dementia. Um, there have been others done, and um, it says they're pointing out another work hypothesizes that it's chronic inflammation from periodontal disease that encourages the development of Alzheimer's. Now let's just take a minute and stop there with all this that I had to read and get to you because it's not all in my brain. What did you get from that? Did you get from that that, oh my gosh, this is something that can cause Alzheimer's and I've got no control over it whatsoever? Because if you did, I said it all wrong. What we get from that is this is something that can cause Alzheimer's, can cause Alzheimer's, doesn't necessarily mean it will, but it can. It increases your chances, and you can do something about it. It's called brushing your teeth and getting in there and flossing. Yeah, and go see your dentist regularly. Find out what's going on in your mouth. Why we don't do this, I don't know. I know an individual who literally does not brush her teeth. She don't have many friends either. Nobody wants to hang around with this gal because we got some bad smells coming from in there, right? says the fact that scientists have a promising drug that targets his process is exciting, but it also helps us know that we just need to take care of our pearly whites. Gingivitis. Now, we've talked about this that I've been telling you about is gingivalis, but gingivitis is the precursor to periodontitis, right? All of these come together where you've got bleeding gums, You've got swollen gums, you've got red gums, you've got tender gums. Well, that's gingivitis. It's a precursor to periodontitis and gingivalis. And honey, it's just coming along next. You don't want that. You just don't want that. So take the time to brush your teeth. Take the time to floss and go see your dinner, your dentist. Go see your dinner, too. I like that idea, but go see your dentist. So brush twice a day with a fluoride-containing toothpaste. Floss at least once a day and visit your dentist probably twice a year unless you have a situation where you need to go more frequently. Now, what about going to the dentist with your loved one with dementia? Let me give you a couple of suggestions there. I have a brother-in-law who does not have dementia. He remembers every detail about everything for his whole dang life. I do not remember the details that he can say. It was October 3rd in um, 1976, and it was a Tuesday, and I'm going, sure. I don't even remember the event, much less the day or the date, but he does. But he has um, PTSD from being in Vietnam. He was put on a medication years and years ago that he still is on, and he has to be on it, but it caused tremors really bad. He just tremors just, oh, it's horrific. I think it's it's left hand that tremors the most. He has a horrible time trying to brush his teeth. Now, you can forget flossing. There's no way the man can floss. He has too many tremors going on. He goes to the dentist every quarter and gets his teeth professionally cleaned to help reduce the chances that he'll have something going on. Did you know that if you have heart disease and your teeth are nasty, cruddy, they're going to want to clean your teeth before they do your heart surgery? That happened to my brother-in-law because he had such a difficult time with his teeth that he wound up having a massive heart attack rushed to the emergency room. They were going to have to do surgery on him, and the doctor said, before the surgeon will do this surgery, we have a dentist coming in to clean his teeth while he is put under. Because we can do the surgery and not clean his teeth, he's going to have problems with his heart. Direct connection there, y'all. We've got to keep those teeth clean. So we take him every quarter to um, get his teeth cleaned professionally. Now, what about your loved one with dementia? Well, I can tell you with my mama, what I did was I did take her very frequently. I don't know if we did every quarter, but we did a couple times a year to get her teeth clean. My mama had dentures, though. She could pop them out and clean them. I don't think she had but about, I don't know, five or six teeth in her head. So those she could keep clean, but her dentures we kept clean. But I recommend for you that if your loved one is having issues with oral hygiene, they're not brushing their teeth regularly, or you think they're not brushing them well, you've noticed bad breath, then trips to the dentist more frequently are a good idea. Now, I wish I'd have brought my toothbrush in, but I didn't. But let's pretend this is the toothbrush. How do you help someone with dementia brush their teeth? Well, 
I brush my dog's teeth, you know, and I get her and I hold her down and I brush and then I wash her face and her little tongue's going like crazy and she's spitting. It's just wonderful. But for someone with dementia, what you don't want to do is to get in front of them and just start brushing their teeth. That doesn't feel right. You want to do the hand over hand method. So they're holding the toothbrush just like they always have in whatever their dominant hand is. And then you're going to come over that hand and you're going to take their hand to their mouth and help them brush their teeth. Not you brush their teeth. You're helping them. See, their hand coming to their mouth feels very normal. That's what they do. Your hand coming to their mouth that doesn't feel so good, but their hand does. And all you're doing is guiding, helping keep that movement going and make sure we're hitting all four quadrants of those teeth. Another good idea for if you are helping to brush your teeth for your loved one, or if they can still do it to some degree, is an electric toothbrush because um, it will give that vibration that's needed that they might not be able to do. So think about that. It might be a really good investment. So keep those teeth clean. Keep your pearly whites pearly white. And if you can figure out how to get them really white, that's what I want to know. So my sweet son-in-law said, well, you can get um, implants. <laughs> no, or veneers. No, covering up my teeth. How many thousands of dollars is that? No, I'll get over it. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Well, I'm glad you joined me today and I hope that that's given you something that will help you in your caregiving journey. A special thank you to Miss Beth Crosby and to National Association of Veterans and Families as they come along beside me and help to finance our ministry. We would appreciate it very much if you're so inclined that you donate to our work and you can do that at www.letstalkdementia.org. Do it through PayPal. It's nice and simple. It is tax deductible. Well, our work is always um, in all honor of the goodness of the Lord Jesus Christ and in memory of my sweet mom, Miss Vera Jean Holder. And there she is eating her ice cream, having a grand time that day. That was a Sunday. I remember it well. We took her out for lunch. She didn't eat squat diddly. We went next door for the um, frozen yogurt, hoping she might eat something. Oh, she did. But you can forget the salad that was on the table earlier. She wasn't going to do that. I hope you guys have a great day. I'll see you next time. Blessings and smiles.